Hey, how's it going guys? John here from the Reaper blog. Today we're going to be catching up on some of the updates from 5.78 to 5.80. 5.90 is already out at the time of this recording, but it seems like it's a good time to catch up on that stuff before we get into that because there's a lot in that video. And that's coming up. We're gonna start off with some things that are for developers of third-party applications, something that can help them get files with the correct start and endpoint, the certain length, and import that into Reaper on the specific track rather than opening up a new project tab or something like that happening. This is something that works with AppleScript, for example, so you can uh, make your own sort of batch processor that does something to the files and it imports them into the open Reaper project. So not something for the average user, but something that developers can use to uh, integrate Reaper better with their products. Another little thing that they've added is in the render window, when you're using the dither option, it's now a one and a half bit dither rather than a one bit dither, which was incorrect. Not the end of the world, can't really hear dither in most cases, but it was technically wrong and they fixed that. Also in the 5.78 update was the addition of the track height locking that's something I did a dedicated video on, but just briefly here, we want to lock the height of this track so that uh, when we're zooming vertically, the tracks don't change in height. So just right click, lock track height. And now when we're zooming, this track will always be the same height. We can still manually adjust the track height but scripts, actions, and uh, you know, mouse wheel zooming, that's not going to affect the track height. Pretty simple, but it's actually really useful once you get into it. And once again, uh, if you check out the video, I'll show some examples. Here's an addition that affects envelopes and automation items. The changelog says, convert automation items to square points when copy pasting to mute tempo or FX bypass envelope and automation item is not pooled. As well, generally prevent curved envelope segments on FX bypass envelopes. So FX bypass, it's just on and off. And here I've got the re-EQ FX bypass, this button here at the top. I've got that envelope showing here. And I also have the track volume. So if I draw automation here, it's going to just automatically snap to these on or off positions. If I put in an automation item, I can't draw anywhere I want. It's, you know, it's going to snap to the top or the bottom. Things are a little bit different if I take an automation item from another track, like I take my volume and uh, do that. I copy it and I go here and I paste it. It switched that to square points, but it's still like, it's still more or less the same data, right? It's still more or less the same shape, but you can't have curved points on a um, bypass envelope. Um, and if we touch any of these, they're going to snap up or down. So that's it from the 5.78 update. But now we're going into the 5.79 stuff and we can start off with some of the video features that were added. We have some new presets. First is to invert colors. So if I go to the preset menu in the video processor, I have an invert colors preset here now, and it uses the additive mode and it just automatically inverts the colors. Also, if we go into the track opacity zoom pan preset, there's now a rotate parameter. So we can rotate this. I asked Justin about this, about uh, actually rotating um, the, the depth, like tilting it back. He said it's possible if you just write the code, uh, but it's not included with that. So um, I don't know, maybe someone wants to tackle that. It's over my head for sure. But let's quickly look at how that looks when we have two videos stacked like this. So I've got two videos here. I'm going to decrease the size of this one. 
turn off clear background, and then I'm gonna turn on rotate. And there we go. So we can rotate uh, a still image or a video on top of another video. That opens up a lot of possibilities for things to do. I have another demo with video to show you different video blend modes. If we open up the help page for the video processor by pressing F1, we'll come up with this and we'll have some information here. And this new stuff here is the GFX mode. Normal, additive, and multiply were the three that were included by default. And now there's three that are for when using the YUV color space. So 17, 18, and 19. And I set up a little uh, demo thing here, a modification of that invert color thing, so I can change the mode easily. So right now it's um, on mode zero, and I can change the opacity. So it's at one. If I decrease that to, really, if I change it to anything past zero, it's going to be just white. If I increase it, it's going to do some weird stuff where black becomes white. Very strange, and then eventually it turns into color again. So you can find some weird effects just trying out different numbers and seeing what happens. So let's switch that to mode one. And so that's a super saturated effect. Yeah, we're, we're seeing some color, but not a lot. And I just need to check that we are on a video color space. So let's we'll put it, we'll force it to RGB because that can affect what we're seeing here. So the different color spaces will make a difference for this. So at opacity two, uh, with one, it's bright, super bright. If we set mode to one and we set our opacity to minus one, it's a, a nice inverted look again, and we can go further and it's it, a more compressed dynamic range version of that. All right, let's switch this to mode three, which was what was used by the uh, invert color preset. Opacity of one, it looks normal. If we change this to zero, it's pure white. Go further to minus two. Then there's some really interesting stuff here. I think at, uh, at minus 0 0.1, all you see is the highlights. And so that's kind of interesting. Pulling it back even further, it starts to look inverted and then the colors start to clip and flip and do weird stuff. And at two, this was similar to what it was at uh, with the first blend mode, I think. So let's switch this to number 17 and we will switch the blend mode or the color space to YUV2. So that inverts the colors and pretty much only at minus minus one and below it actually looks right. How about mode 18? There's like a really compressed version of, of what we just saw, really compressing the dynamic range. At 0 0.5, it looks, it's inverted, it's super bright. It's also a bit kind of foggy in the, uh, the black areas. Zero looks like pure white. At one, it looks normal. Actually, no, it's, it's, uh, it's brightened. And at two, it's really cranked up the saturation. All right, so this is mode 19. Interesting effect. This, this kind of looks cool right there. Inverted, but there's still some color there. And now this one at minus 0 0.1, it's black. And zero, it's white. And then we, so we're inverting the colors again and making it super bright. So like I said, interesting effects, kind of have to experiment. Basically all the presets aren't written. If we go to the performance meter, there's a new option in here for showing the X run counters. That's a uh, buffer under runs. So like real time buffer under runs, there's only been one here. So yeah, just more information about what's happening if you're experiencing any dropouts and things like that. This can keep count of them. In the 5.79 update, there was an update for keyboards to pass through the spacebar to various windows to the main window. That's just to prevent plugins and some other windows from preventing you from starting and stop playback. 
In 5.80, they made this function optional so that visually impaired users can still navigate through different windows uh, using the spacebar. And uh, so that was a really important change that they did. If we look in preferences in 5.80 and up, we're going to find this option, allow space key to be used for navigation in various windows. So you want to turn that on to go back to the, uh, the older behavior. For VST3 plugins, there are a couple new compatibility options. So if we go to the, uh, the plus button beside the presets and go down to compatibility settings, there's this option, inform plugin when track channel count changes. So that's always going to be on by default for VST3 plugins. So that just means that if the number of channels on the track changes, the plugin is going to respond to that. And in most cases, that's going to be the right thing to do. We can also right click on the tracks uh, IO buttons here, the two in, two out button here. Go to request VST3 bus channel count. There's auto, there's mono, stereo from three up to 64 channels. All right, so that's it for the updates from 5.78 to 5.80. Coming up soon will be what's new in 5.90 and i'll see you guys then thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already follow me on facebook and twitter support the reaper blog through patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials <laughs>